Hello everyone, my name is Curtis Eckerman and I am going to show you how to make identifications in iNaturalist. Uh, this tutorial is primarily meant for my students in general biology and zoology, but if any of you are here from uh, uh, elsewhere, then I hope you find this uh, video helpful as well. Uh, in in the courses that I teach, I ask my students to use iNaturalist to make observations, but I also ask them to practice and make identification, practice making identifications in iNaturalist as well. This is often an overlooked portion of iNaturalist, but we have to consider that iNaturalist would not work in its current form if people weren't on there helping others make identifications. So, while the primary focus in the course, and for a lot of people in iNaturalist, is to make observations and post those observations, another big part of iNaturalist is the community coming onto iNaturalist and with their expertise or with their interests or their knowledge, they are helping to make identifications to um, uh, increase the accuracy of the data that's being put into iNaturalist. Right? And so I'm going to show you how to uh, uh, look through organisms to identify and then how to identify them or how to use the tools on iNaturalist to identify them even if you don't know much about that particular organism. Now, <clears throat> it is important to note that making identifications is very important for the iNaturalist community, but it's also very important for you as the learner. Identifications are a wonderful way to learn something about an organism, especially if you tackle an, an identification that maybe uh, you're not familiar with. Maybe you're looking up an organism that you have no idea what it is. You can go through that process of learning something about it at least enough to make a comment or to make a stab at an identification. It's also important to note you do not have to be perfect in your identifications. It doesn't matter if you get an identification wrong. Uh, as long as you've gone through that process of, of learning through uh, identification and have made an attempt, others can certainly help you help point you in the way, uh, point you in the right direction as far as a correct identification. That's one of the wonderful things about iNaturalist is that the community is quite wonderful in, in helping direct people in terms of what to look for and how to make those identifications. Okay, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and do some identifications. So I'm currently on uh, my dashboard. This is what opens up when I um, enter into iNaturalist and I can see people that I'm following and my own observations and, the, and what's going on there. Um, but we're going to go straight to identifications and the, and the best way to get there is just go up here to the identify um, button here at, at the top menu click on that and it's going to take you to this identification page. Um, this initial page can be quite daunting and overwhelming because currently it is showing you everything that needs help with identification from North America. And I mean everything. If I were just to scroll down quickly, I can see that there's roughly 271,000 pages of these identifications. Right? That is too overwhelming for most people, including the experts. And, and what you're going to do, the reason it's overwhelming is not only it's the sheer number of organisms, but it's very likely you're not very familiar with those organisms. You're much more familiar with local organisms. And as a result, we're going to apply some filters to uh, uh, limit the number of, of specimens that we're looking at. So I am currently in Austin, Texas, uh, teaching here at Austin Community College. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to limit it down to Travis County. Travis County is the county that Austin sits in. Uh, so Travis County, <clears throat> Texas. I have to be careful to make sure I do this correctly because if somebody accidentally made a place called T Travis Country, which doesn't, which isn't correct, but Tra Travis County, and so it'll repopulate it, populate this. And you'll notice as I go down, now there's only about 3,000 pages um, to look through. Again, still overwhelming. Well, I can filter it even further. Let's say, for instance, that um, I'm 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 trying to learn about plants um, this time around. I want to look I want to look at uh, just plants. I don't want to look at um, animals. And so I can limit that even further. I can. Just type in plants by species. Now I can't just hit enter at this point on your keyboard. Instead, I have to come down here and select the correct one. And now it's only going to show you plants that need identification here in Travis County. 
And so we're now down to 1,259 pages. I can limit that even further. I can type anything in here. Maybe I only want to look at gymnosperms, the, the, the uh, pine trees and the cycads and, and, and so forth. Uh, let's try that, gymnosperms. Actually, gymnospermia. There, gymnospermia. There we go. Oh, that's the. That's sorry. That's the genus. And maybe there's. Oh, I know what I want to do. Not gymnospermia. I want to do the conifer conifers. The coniferophyta. So these are the conifers. These are your pine trees. So I'm going to limit it even further here to just the pine trees. These, around here we have uh, junipers. We have. Uh, 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 cedars, things like that. So we're going to take a look at that here in just a second. But I want to scroll down. There's only 29 pages of these to look through. And again, you're not necessarily going to look through all of those. You don't need to. It's not a requirement. But it certainly is limited. What you're looking at kind of makes you a little feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, what you're going to do. And at the same time, one of the other advantages of doing this is that you're going to see a lot of the same thing when you make when you limit your searches like this. All right, so um, I, I'm not a particular expert at conifers at all, so this may be a good place to start. Maybe I want to um, become a little bit more familiar with my conifers, my, uh, my pine trees and ash junipers in the particular area. And so um, I can jump right in. Now keep in mind that the, what you're seeing are those that still need help with identification. These are not the research grade observations. These are ones that need help. Now you'll notice that some of them have identification. Uh, Juniperus or Juniperus uh, ashii, for instance. This is ash juniper. Well, if I click on this particular observation, it's going to take me to that observation page. You'll notice that currently there's only one identification. Okay, And that's why it still needs help. You In, in iNaturalist, you have to have at least two non-disagreeing, um, well, you have to have at least two agreeing identifications with no other disagreements. So the, the real rule is that at least two thirds, I think, if it, I think it has it on here somewhere, at least two thirds of the um, um, identifications have to agree on a particular identification. Now, uh, I'm at this observation. I can look at the different pictures. I can see the general, they've got a picture here. They've got a picture here. I can zoom in by clicking on the picture. I can zoom in a little further. This is nice because I can see a little bit more detail of this uh, particular organism. I'm going to go back and I'll click on this again and click on it again and look a little bit more. I can see the overall structure of this tree. Now, I know a little bit about this particular tree because, of course, it is everywhere. Um, and and I, seem to, I, I do kind of agree with Ash Juniper. But... I'm not an expert. I do want to check first. I do want to look at something. And, and what I can do is I can hit this compare button. And by hitting compare, what will happen is it will show you um, similar kinds of, of trees in the area or similar. In this case, it's going to show you the same genus that may occur in this area. And so, well, guess what? I just learned something. I did not realize that there was three different kinds of junipers in this particular area. And I can tell you right off the bat that I'm not a particular expert at this. And so I may find myself at uh, a disadvantage trying to make the identification. Now, one thing I can tell, it looks like there's only been one identification of rocky juniper in this particular area. So I'm a little bit suspect um, already on that one. But these other two, Eastern Red Cedar, and ash juniper seem to be very common in this area, right? And so um, they're two different species. Um, can I make a, a, a decision one or the other with what I know? No, not at this time. I couldn't. If I knew something more about them, uh, maybe I could. But I'm missing something. I don't have enough information at my um, disposal uh, to make that identification. So what I will do is I'm pretty sure it is in that genus. I'm going to make... I'm going to make a suggestion. Now, uh, the, the, the tools in iNaturalist, there's a number of them. I just showed you one of the tools, and that was the tool that you had to use for the longest time. There's another one. Um, just by going to the species name and clicking on it, it will make a suggestion. It's using an artificial intelligence software to uh, uh, basically it's facial recognition for uh, used for plants and animals to make uh, a potential identification. And it has given me some options. Sorry. Let me scroll down a little bit better here. It's giving me options and saying, well, we're pretty sure it's in the junipers. And, and, and I can say that much. After looking at the uh, images, I'm saying, yeah, I think it's in the junipers. 
but it's saying these are the other top suggestions. So it could be one of those. It's not helping me narrow that down too much. I think it kind of left us where we were before. So I am pretty sure uh, it's junipers. Now, when I'm when it when I end up making the 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 um, identification is going to prompt me something. But normally what you would try to do is you would try to increase the identification. Currently I am not increasing the identification. That is, I'm not getting it to species level. I'm not uh, uh, getting a more precise identification. Whenever you do that, you should make a comment as to why. Say in this case, I'm saying I, I am pretty sure it is a juniper. But uh, oops! But I don't know enough to distinguish between ash juniper and um, eastern red cedar. And so I'm basically saying uh, this is what I think. I just don't. I don't. I, I don't have enough information or based on my own knowledge now. Uh, you may ask, and it's going to come up with here saying, because you're not making a better identification, you're saying you have two options. One, you're saying, I don't know, but I think it's a juniper. And the other one is, is I, it's a juniper, but it's not this species. Well, I don't know. So I'm just going to click on I don't know. And there's my comment. Um, so you may be asking yourself, then why do this? I mean, I didn't help this person with that identification, really. Uh, but maybe I did a little bit. I helped to um, uh, establish that it is a juniper. But more importantly, I helped me. I helped me learn something about junipers in the area. I saw there's two different kinds. I, I now realize that when I look at junipers, I need to start looking more carefully at the difference between the red eastern red cedar and the ash juniper. And so that will help my own information and my own future of identification. So keep in mind, I mentioned this before, identifications are not just about the data, not just about uh, what you can do to help identifications. It's also a learning process. And so I learned something in this process while showing it to you. All right, so that's an example of how I can make an identification. It's meant to be an exploratory process. It's meant to be um, something where you um, are looking for information. It's not a perfect process. Don't worry if you're wrong. That's what the community is for. Someone will come along and um, either tell me I'm wrong or say uh, this is ash juniper because of A and B versus the eastern red cedar. That's the kind of discussion that can happen uh, here in iNaturalist. It's one of the things that makes the iNaturalist community um, so awesome is that it's a great community for learning. All right, I'm going to go back to identify here, and I'm going to do a bit more pointed filter because in the future, after you, if you decide to continue to use iNaturalist or if you're using it now, um, perhaps you're more interested in the things that you know something about. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to show you how I might do I might use this myself. So I've spent a lot of time in both Iowa and Texas studying reptiles. And I'm going to uh, go to Texas, and I'm going to narrow um, this this search down to snakes. So order serpentes, serpentes, and um, you'll notice that there's about 55 pages of this. And of course, again, I'm not getting always the best specimens because the, the really good pictures and the really nice ones are easy to identify. And that's why they get identified so quickly. Um, some of these are just going to be too hard. You, you'll you have to learn that process. For instance, let's take a look at this very first one. This is a snakeskin. Well, there's very few snakeskins that um, you can learn, you can know. You can determine species by. There, there are a few if you have a good enough picture of it and you can see some of the pattern. But otherwise, there's no way without having this in hand or having a piece of DNA to do a DNA test on it, there's no way to really identify this particular um, species because it could be a number of different things. But you, if, if, uh, if I knew something about the snake, I could start to look for a few characteristics. Like, for instance, the scales on this one are not keeled. They don't have... Um, these little lines, well, actually, I take that back. Looks, nope, they don't. They, they don't look like they have the keels on them, which throws it into uh, being a co color green snake. These are these are snakes that are like rat snakes and uh, and coat trips and things like that. So it's got to be one of those. And you can see that some have suggested that, but that's about as far as they can go. And and 
because I've been in this community a long time, I actually know this person needs a very good herpetologist. And, and that helps me a little bit with identifications because if he can't identify it beyond that, then there's very little chance that I'm going to be able to. So I'm going to add my agreement. I've made a contribution to the, um, the, the identification. Maybe I have not helped that identification much, but I certainly learned something from that um, particular identification. Right. And so this is the one of the drawbacks of doing identifications. Oftentimes you're getting the worst of the identifications or the observations, excuse me, because they can be hard to identify. Um, sometimes it might be worth your while to go and look at um, other examples. So I'll give you a good example here. I'm going to go to this water snake image or this water snake observation. Now I worked on water snakes for some time as an undergraduate. And there's a few different kinds in the area. And so to me, this does not look like nearly enough information to be able to determine what kind of water snake it might be. Um, and, and in fact, as I'm looking at this, I don't think so, but it could even be a cotton mouth for that matter. So it might be worth your while to go look up other snakes that are research grade, for instance. And you can do that by just going here to um, uh, the the distribution map and clicking on one of the dots. So, and I'll find one that has, that's a uh, research grade. So this one's a research grade. This is a diamondback water snake. And, and I actually work with this one. So I definitely know that's a diamondback water snake. And I can see uh, what people have said about this one. And I can look at the characteristics. It's called a diamondback water snake because of the diamond like patterns along its back here. And um, I can also, as you're doing this, I can hit agree as I am basically marking it myself as saying, okay, I've looked at this, I agree with this identification, even though it's research grade, I'm still using it for my own education. I am, I am adding identification here as a part of a process. I can also go even on this research grade one, I can go hit compare. I can see other water snakes in the given area. This is a good example because there's only, well, Nerodia is a particular genus of water snake. There are a few other kinds of water snakes. But the, the two common ones are this plain-bellied water snake and then this diamondback water snake. And as I look at the comparison, this is a good one, I can look at this pattern and I can see that pattern in, the, in this image right here. I can see that pattern pretty clearly. But that pattern is definitely not there with this particular snake. This is the plain-bellied water snake. They don't have the same patterning. That's how I'm using iNaturalist and its tools to learn something and to help make identifications. So I think uh, even this, the non-discriminatory eye would be able to look at this and go, yeah, it's this one, not that one. All right, so that is a um, brief tutorial on how to do identifications at iNaturalist. Keep in mind that this identification process is not a uh, very formal one. Instead, it's about uh, exploring, uh, about your interests, about communicating and interacting with other people online. And so don't worry about messing up. Don't worry about making a mistaken identification because uh, everyone is in the same boat here. Everyone knows that this is a, a process, that it is a, a part where different people of different backgrounds, um, different expertise, different um, interests and hobbies are coming together and um, are able to contribute that knowledge to um, iNaturalist and in turn pass that on to someone like yourself who is also doing identifications but are also using it to learn something about that organism. A few summers ago, I decided I did not know very much about one of the largest group of insects in this area and that is the moths. I knew very little about them and I have gotten much, much more comfortable with them by first making observations and second, going and practicing identifications here in iNatural. So I'm much more comfortable with being able to pick out some of these moths now um, because of this process. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful to you and uh, I will either see you online again or I will see you in class.